Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Today I'm going to show you a recipe that I've been slightly obsessed with. I've been wanting to make this for a while and I finally found some time to get it out of my head and into an actual recipe. Today's recipe is a tahini shortbread filled with a tahini salted honey ganache and it's so good. For this recipe, you're only going to need a very few ingredients. You're going to need some unsalted butter at room temperature, some light brown sugar and some caster sugar, along with a little bit of salt and vanilla, and then some tahini and some plain all-purpose flour. Very, very straightforward. So this recipe couldn't really be any easier. It's a slice and bake cookie, and it's simple as can be. So all we're going to do is we're going to take our unsalted butter, which is at room temperature. We're going to add that to our mixer along with our two types of sugar. Now, the reason I'm using castor and light brown is for flavor. So we want that kind of just pure sweetness from the castor sugar, but a little bit of that kind of almost toffee caramel note for the cookie. But if you use all brown sugar, it can overpower the tahini. So a nice balance works really well. So we just add those as well, along with a little splash of vanilla, just for background flavor and then a little pinch of salt. Because if you've watched my videos for any period of time, you know that salt really helps bring out the flavor. So a good pinch of flaked sea salt as well. We're gonna mix those together until the butter and sugar are really light and fluffy. And you can see the color has gone from this kind of caramelly brown to a really pale brown. So one of the things I think people struggle with is knowing exactly what light and fluffy means. So I'm going to show you. So if we look here, you can see that this is dark and grainy, but this stuff which has been more incorporated is really pale, much lighter than the original colour, and it's much fluffier. So we need to make sure we scrape down the bowl regularly, reincorporate all the dark stuff and mix it until it all looks as light and as pale as this. And remember, this has brown sugar, so it's not going to be as pale as normal caster sugar and butter might be for a cake, say. So once the butter and sugar have been combined, you just need to scrape the bowl down once more, get everything back into the middle, and then we're going to add our tahini. So it is a beautiful mixture, so make sure you get every last drop into the bowl and just mix that for a minute or two to combine. And then all we need to do is add our flour. So I'm using plain flour for this all-purpose flour. You can use different types, but I think for this I don't want any flavors of those really beautiful flowers like buckwheat getting in the way of the tahini. So I'm just using plain flour. Just gonna add it to the mixer and then on very slow speed, just pulse it a little bit, just until it starts to combine so it doesn't fly everywhere. And then just mix it briefly. And this is the important stage. If you mix this type, uh, this type of cookie too much, you end up with something that's too chewy and not light and crisp and delicate. So what you wanna do is add it in and mix just until it's combined. It might not look fully, fully mixed in, but just until combined and then stuck. So once the mixture is fully combined, we're gonna take the bowl off the mixer and we're gonna tip all the dough straight onto the work surface. And then just using your hands, just gently bring it together into a uniform dough. And then we're gonna cut it in half and then divide it into two separate log shapes. So because these are slice and bake cookies, we want to try and get these logs of dough as round as possible. And there's a nice little trick to do that, that just uses a sheet of parchment and a bench scraper. And it's super easy, but very, very helpful. So you want to put your rough log of uh, cookie dough onto a piece of parchment and then roll it over. Then using something straight edged, I'm just using a plastic dough scraper, and then just gently press with the straight edge into the crease to create this really nice circle. Uh, what you need to make sure you don't do, because this dough is fairly soft, if you press too much, the dough will squeeze out to the edges. So you just want light pressure, just until it conforms to the shape like that. And you end up with a really nice round roll of cookie dough. So just wrap that in cling film into the fridge and then chill that for four hours until nice and firm. So now that our dough is nice and firm, we can cut these into slices. Now it's really important for this, use a thin, sharp knife, so a paring knife is perfect. And the reason for this is when you're slicing the cookie, and this is true of any kind of slice and bake cookie, if your knife is really thick, like a big, thick chef's knife, sometimes when you put so much pressure on it, it splits the cookie and it breaks, so 
thin sharp knife is just a lot easier to use. Once they're sliced, we're going to put those onto parchment lined baking trays. They don't really spread too much, so you don't need to leave too much room between each one. And they're going to go in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius for about 10 to 12 minutes just until light and golden. But before they go in, we're going to decorate them a little bit. So I have this custom mix that I make of black and white sesame seeds. It's one third black sesame and two thirds white sesame seeds. And all we're gonna do is brush each cookie with a little bit of beaten egg white, just a thin coating, and then sprinkle lots and lots of these over the top. And that's gonna give a really nice decoration, but it'll also really amplify the sesame flavor of these cookies. And it's just a perfect way to finish them off. So now that our cookies are out of the oven and cooling, let's talk about the filling. Now it's a basic ganache, but we're adding a couple of extra flavors to really boost it and really make something special. So we're gonna start off with some dark chocolate, and then in a pan we have equal parts by weight cream, which is kind of a classic ganache ratio. But then to add a little bit more flavor, we're gonna add two tablespoons of honey, and that's gonna add a really beautiful flavor, along with two more tablespoons of the tahini. And that's just kind of to boost the flavor in the whole cookie to give that real strength of tahini flavor and also to kind of mellow out the honey just a little bit. That's then gonna go on the heat and you want to make sure that you stir that occasionally because if you let it sit, the honey's likely to sink to the bottom of the pan and it will catch and burn really quickly. So be very, very careful. And then once that's at a simmer, you can take that and pour it over the chocolate let it sit for a couple of minutes before stirring together to form a beautiful silky ganache. Then set that aside until it's thickened enough that you can pipe it and it will hold its shape. And then we're gonna fill the cookies with them. The way I do that is just pop it into a piping bag and just pipe a little mound onto each, uh, every other cookie and then sandwich them together just until it peaks towards the edge. If you want, you can spoon it on too. If you don't wanna use a piping bag, that's fine. But the piping bag just makes it a little easier and quicker as well. So that is how you make my tahini shortbread cookies filled with a salted honey ganache. Trust me when I say it, these are so addictive and there's no way you'll just be able to stick to one. As always, the recipe is up in the corner if you wanna go give it a look. And if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel, click on that notification bell to be the first to find out when my new recipes go live. And if there's anything you wanna see in an upcoming video, leave me a comment down below.